what you're seeing is the live you we were talking we were watching kit boga the other day and then you guys were like yo there's a guy that literally <laughs> gets scammers and then actually hacks their sh while they're scamming uh which sounds insane so if that's what this is cctv feed of a scam call center and right now this disgusting group of scammers is laughing at someone they just successfully scammed <laughs> And later, the only one laughing is going to be me when I tell the entire office of scammers their real names. But before I do, let me first explain how I tracked these scammers down and found all of their personal information. If you've ever tried to get your computer fixed, there's a good chance you've heard of Geek Squad. They're a massive company that fixes pretty much anything computer related, and undoubtedly there's going to be a ton of people looking them up on Google. But scammers have caught on to this, so you won't even get the real website as the first result. Instead, you'll get a bunch of ads for similar looking companies, most of which are scam. Yeah, by the way, Google should be held liable for allowing people to put ads of scams at the top of their website. Like the fact that Google's not held accountable for selling ads to f scams is crazy. That, like that's nuts. I could literally go put up an ad right now for the most b scam ever. And Google, do they do nothing. They just take your money and push it to as many people as you want it to be pushed to. It's just a transaction. They don't even do any due diligence with it won't even get the real website as the first result. Instead, you'll get a bunch of ads for similar looking companies, most of which are scams. But the average person doesn't notice these things. They just want a number they can call to get their problem solved. What they don't know is the people they're calling aren't computer experts, but rather a bunch of scammers from India. But I'll seek these numbers out and purposefully call them because as a part of the scam, they'll have their victims download remote access software. And I can take advantage of this to reverse the connection and gain access to their computers. Wait, 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 wait. This dude's fucking reverse connecting to them via log me in. I thought with log me in, you couldn't even do that. This guy has to be a savant to basically backdoor into log me in's remote software because it's designed. It's the, the, the software is designed so that you can't, you have to give access to them, right? You have to confirm a bunch of stuff. I just, I would, I would figure there'd be fail safes where Logman's not giving the people it's connecting to that info, but maybe I'm wrong. So how do I, how do I get my Gmail fixed? Cause I like how he tries to sound really dumb when he's talking to them. <laughs> how do I get like my Gmail fixed? And how do I fix this? <laughs> but he's like actually a like a super tech nerd. I love it. Load remote access software, and I can take advantage of this to reverse the connection and gain access to their computers. So how do I, how do I get my Gmail fixed? Because we have to put some securities on your computer system to remove the hackers and the Trojan. Right now, the scammer has connected to me, but I've also connected to him, and I'm watching his computer screen as he attempts to run his scam. It's a Trojan. You can see 12, 12 connections. Do you have 12 computer and laptop with you? He's now opened something called... <laughs> Dude, so I used to work for a company, work for a company that did like this, right? And what, what they do is you, you give the, the sales reps a bunch of stuff that they can point out on the computer that sounds scary that isn't. So one of the things they would pull up is like the event viewer. And if you know anything about the event viewer, it just has flags all over it all the time it doesn't it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean that your computer's fucked up it just means it's getting errors randomly so like fucking people would pull up the event viewer and find flags and be like see these are critical errors we need to fix on your pc <laughs> like it's just such bullshit, dude netstat which is a command that shows network activity to try to convince me that my pc has a trojan these connections are completely normal and him claiming otherwise is a lie when I first called Frank Williamson, his real name actually being Devesh, I told him I had a problem with accessing Gmail. Now he's saying the cause of the issue is a computer trojan. The reason for this is pretty simple. He doesn't actually know how to fix anything and can make much more money by simply making things up. A new tab open up in the browser automatically, right? It directs you a new website and that website has been planted by them only. 
so that once your IP get connected with them, then they install something on your Windows without any permission. After saying a whole bunch of nothing, the scammer was pretty sure he had convinced me of his fake problem, which is when he started trying to sell me an expensive and bogus support plan. You have to pay for two things. Okay. The driver toolkit and your anti trojan security of the web route. The driver toolkit is of the nine. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? And your anti trojan anti trojan security trojan security of the web route. Of the web route. <laughs> what the fuck is that, dude? The driver toolkit is of the ninety dollars. Okay. And your anti trojan security of the web route will be approximately near about. $129. What he's trying to sell is nothing more than techno babble. And at this point, I had wasted enough of his time and decided to confront him. I just want to know why you scam people. That's all I want to know. I guess you make a lot of money, right? We are not. You're not scammers? We are fixing your issue. Yeah, okay. So so you're not scammers, and yet you, you bring up something that is not I indicative of Trojans. This computer is a virtual you computer. This thing you bring up with your dummy computer system. Yeah. All these things are false. So you are a scammer, not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you you pulled you pulled up a VMware. This is a scam computer, bro. This is a fake computer. Of course, it's got errors. It's fake, obviously, bro. Well, I'm a scammer. Okay. So I love how like look at his fucking. This is his desktop. Just Spotify, Zoom. Just looks like an, a PDF. They are fixing the people. Okay, okay, people. yeah. While he was accusing me of being a scammer, I was quietly scanning his PC's network when I discovered that unusually this group had installed CCTV. The reason I say this is unusual is because the majority of call centers that I've come across with video surveillance tend to be fairly large, with at least Holy shit. 30 to 40 employees, like in this one or in this one. That's why I was quite surprised to find that this office only had six to seven people at any given time in a relatively small room. Either way, these cameras gave me insight into the day-to-day -day lives of these scammers, and many times I spotted them eating and socializing just like in any normal job. <laughs> but more Bro, if I had this power, I would do unspeakable things. Oh my god, dude. I would do horrible things. <laughs> if I got access to some shitty people's cameras, dude, I would I would really try to fucking light a fire. Importantly, not literally, metaphorically. Be able to see and hear them meant I could gather some rock solid evidence of their activities. Let's take a look at the same scammer who previously tried to scam me, now running the exact same script on someone else. Peter Carter was a technician who has a computer about it. Okay, and right now it's with me. Because that you have Trojan and virus in your computer. You have Trojan and virus. And like the way, so the way these scams work is that there's two parts to it. And really, it's the first part that's the problem. How are they getting this number? Right? And they're getting this number from two ways. Either they're Googling and it's like a paid ad, which is, in my opinion, the legitimate way for them to get a number right and then there's the second way where literally people are infecting people's pcs with pop-ups and locking their screen and putting a message on it saying error your pc is infected you need to call this number now and that is how a lot of these scams operate is by basically using malware and you know stuff it, if you weren't 80 years old and you knew how to close a browser with different commands it wouldn't be a big deal but these browsers like lock up the screen and stuff like that. And you know, if you're old, it's scary. And they, they put red flashing lights or the FBI one. It, so there's some really bad ones that actually like infect your, your PC and they lock all of your files, right? They lock all of your files and then you literally get ransomed by like the Russian mafia and, and, and you have to pay them to reverse it like you literally can't fix those locks a lot of the time um but yeah i think the pop-up stuff has gone away i think they're just infecting you in different ways now since i was actively listening to the call i decided to intervene before they lost any of their money hello yeah hi is this robert Yes. I'm calling you because I believe that you were contacting people from a technical support company. 
Yes. Yeah, I want to let you know that those people are scammers. Um, oh, but I, Jesus Christ almighty. Yes. What they do is, I don't know exactly how you got your number. I assume you looked up tech support on Google. Is that how you got the number initially yeah, that you called? Yeah, from, from Geek Squad. Right, so you looked up Geek Squad on Google? Because those guys yeah. are not Geek Squad. Thankfully, I was able to successfully warn him, but there were many... That's wild that he's able to call him while he's getting scammed. That's actually crazy. That's so fucking cool that he's able to do that. <laughs> That's fucking nuts, bro. He's like, hang on, I have a call on the other line. And this is this dude. Hey, what's up, fam? Yeah, you know that guy on the other line? Yeah, he's a piece of shit and he's trying to take your money, bro. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Later. Just fucking like fade away. <laughs> Many more people who had previously been scammed before I had a chance to intervene. This was evident from the many pictures I downloaded from the scammers' computers showing payments made via credit card and check for some pretty hefty amounts. Yeah. Anywhere from 55 to 1200 or even... Oh my god, bro. Oh, these old fuckers with checkbooks, dude. Oh my god, stop, bro. They fucking, they, these fucking pieces of shit convinced some fucking lady on her deathbed who only has a romantic relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, $1,500 that she's got saved away in her fucking bank account. Oh man, dude, the scams are getting better, bro. The scams are getting better. This is crazy amounts of money to be fucking scamming. $1,500 had been paid for nothing. One and notice they're all checks, by the way, because the only people being targeted by these scams and falling for it are old people or uneducated people. Picture I found that really highlights how disgusting these scammers really are is this one, where they force an elderly looking man to hold up a check. Just more proof these scammers don't have even an ounce of remorse. They fucking made him take a picture of the check and fucking, oh... Regardless of age, they don't care. That's why I wanted to identify not just the heartless scammers in India, but also the people facilitating the laundering of money. Because processing right. checks internationally is far more difficult and could arouse suspicion, the scammers will instead have their victims make them payable to shell companies in the United States. There were many such companies involved in this scheme, and oh. I've blurred their names because I've reported all of them to U.S. federal authorities where they're actively being investigated. I can't oh! Oh my god, bro, this dude's insane. <laughs> He's like, fuck that shit, dude. I mean, if you have the info, if you're able to get the info, like this is what an like I'm okay, I don't I'm not gonna say I'm not singing his praises. Like this dude's a G, but I feel like if you had this technical know-how and you've you you know you did this stuff, I think most good people, good people are gonna do this, right? Like prevent people from getting like if you have the power it's like you know with great power comes great responsibility dude but i think i think most good-natured people would do the same type of shit if they knew how to I show you their names but what i can show you is a phone call with the owners of one of these companies rather than keeping my own team i outsource the team you know you outsource so it there's different, yeah different different companies i won't bore you with the rest of the call but her claim that she outsources i won't bore you with the rest of the call thank you Thank you. No offense to Kit Boga sitting me on a phone for 30 minutes with a scammer lying back and forth. Okay, but let's just cut to the chase and get some good done. Is true to the extent that all the people she works with are scammers. A Google search reveals that her company was involved with another type of scam, the Roku support scam, proven by this review from three years ago. But remarkably, the group I'm investigating were stupid enough to not just use U.S. companies, but the real Indian ones to process credit cards. There were two directors who ran the main business, Geek Care Online, and these were Jog Paul and Praful. But it would be Praful who, according to his own LinkedIn page, was the boss and founder of this company, and could often be spotted at his desk on the CCTV. <laughs> Bro, I worked at, you know, one of these like scam call centers, basically. And it was just realistically, it was just full of drug addicts that were in Florida for recovery and people that, you know, knew these guys. Right. And it was a huge company 
and it's just a bunch of fucking douchebags who think they're fucking cool scamming old people and then it was like the normal ones of us were on the back end actually dealing with the customers it was horrible man it was honestly horrible it, it was horrible bro because at like my friend was like you know the one who started the company and like i talked to him like bro like they're sending they're sending us computers that are they don't need to be cleaned bro right and so like the thing with the thing with us was on the back end is like if we got a computer that was completely fine, there was no issues with it. I had like trouble charging someone for fixing it, you know? But at the end of the day, that's all of our livelihood there. We're all getting paid to do these jobs. You know what I mean? So like, I can say I had an issue with it, but we still fucking fix these computers, quote unquote. But the sales force was like the big driving thing of the whole company, right? Cause they're the one making all the money, convincing all these deals to happen. And it's just pieces of, it's just pieces of shit, dude. Like just grimy, grimy dirtbag dudes that are fucking drug addicts. They're, they're, they're fucking high on opioids while they're there the whole time. And they're just saying whatever they can to these people to get their, their information and, and do a transaction. I'm sure it's no different in, you know, in India where they can't even be processed really for this stuff. But it's just like you would get a PC and then like someone would call in and it's like an older person you can tell they're just they're so scared about what happened and they think we're gonna ruin their pc and it's just oh god bro it was so bad you know because we're connect you're you you're basically connected to all these pcs so we would have like 50 pcs in a queue to get fixed right and then take like three to six hours to fix these pcs and because we had like a decent you know regimen of like cleaning out a pc like we would clean i would say like 80 percent of the pcs we got needed to be cleaned but what they got charged for that you know what i mean just the way they got the number all that stuff i had so many issues with it but you know when that's what's paying your rent it's difficult right but these guys they're starting these businesses it, it's, it's just scummy right from the get-go for full ran two other and like i don't even think they're fixing their pcs at all they're just getting the money and then being done with it, right? Other companies, Hootzilla Trip Private Limited, which would also be used to take credit cards, and strangely, HVP Pharmaceuticals. You'd have good reason to wonder why the boss of a scam call center would also run a pharmaceutical company, which leads us to someone named Sarika. She is also a director of this pharmaceutical right. business, and according to her LinkedIn profile, actually worked in the pharmaceutical industry in the past, which is why it was quite a surprise to see her in the same office where the scamming was taking place. As it turns out, it would be a file on her computer that would answer all of my questions. This file was of her Indian identity card, also known as an Adhar card, and it clearly showed that she wasn't just Praful's associate, but his wife. She actually mm. had a much bigger role in managing the call center's operations, and it would be the access I had to her computer that would clear up quite a few things I didn't previously know. Firstly, when any of the agents would successfully scam someone, they would fill out a Google form with information about the victim's name, email address, mode of payment, and amount scammed. Sarika had access to the responses of this form as a spreadsheet, yep. and it yep. gave me a much deeper look into the number of people and amount of money they had managed to defraud. These scammers had managed to scam a little over 1,500 people and had made a whopping $569,000 in the span of only 15 months, which- Jesus Christ, bro. And like how many employees, dude? I mean that, but I'm saying like that amount of money for that many victims is they were scamming for very hard, like high amounts. They're actually very impressive numbers for a center of their size. Sarika was also in charge of managing the Google AdWords account, which was very interesting to me because. Ah, this is the account they used to get the, the fucking calls in. AdWords is a service that allows people to pay for an. So they have to pay three thousand dollars for 13 point k views basically and they're getting a click-through rate of like 10 percent that's pretty good dude how are your keywords performing geek squad geek squad 
And it's like, yeah, and Google's giving them all these metrics like they're a real fucking company, dude. Advertisement for their website to show up at the top of Google. We can see that this specific AdWords campaign is targeting the term Geek Squad. In the past month, the ad has been shown to around 9,000 people, and the majority of these people, not surprisingly, are 65 or older. Every no. No. No shot. Every month, they will pay anywhere from $2,800 to $9,000. And this may seem like a lot of money just for advertising. That They're paying a lot for those ads, bro. October, you got, it's end of the quarter, you probably got a lot more people hitting it. But a better way to frame it is the return on investment. Since they have generated $569,000 in revenue in only 15 months, this means that they will make approximately $38,000 per month. By taking this figure and subtracting the average advertising cost, then dividing by the advertising cost, and finally multiplying by 100, we get a quite substantial 645% return. These types of returns are really only possible if you're running a scam operation, but also if you're scamming the very people who work for you. Sarika sent all the employees this email stating the incentive. You know what? That's a, that's a good, that's a good point. There is a lot of legal companies that are scamming older people. Okay. So this is, I worked for another company that got bought out by some company and what this company that buys out companies does is they, they take on like their old customer base, their dying customer bases, right? And they just keep raising the prices up on monthlies that old people aren't looking at. And they just bleed the customer base dry. They give it, they give whatever the services they bought, they give them really shitty support. They outsource it. They make it as cheap as possible. They don't try to add anything new to it. Like they bought out, they bought out like, you know, old internet providers, like, like, uh, like Netscape and shit. Like they buy out these really old companies that aren't making good money anymore. And they just take that data basically of those customers and they just see how much they can squeeze out of it. That shit I think is criminal too. Like that is criminal as well, but it's more nuanced. So it's more difficult to, to pin something down like that. But that shit's predatory and shitty and horrible. ...plan for the month of August, 2023. For every $500 they scam, they will get 250 rupees. A currency conversion shows that 250 rupees is only equivalent to $3, which means the employees will make less than 1% of what they're stealing. And this is fairly typical behavior. What? The scammers were getting scammed, bro. They ain't making shit. The bosses will take 99% of whatever the workers make, leaving them with pretty much nothing. And all of this gave me a pretty good look into the scammers' finances, but there was still a question lingering in the back of my mind. Where were the scammers actually located? This may seem easy to answer, but it turned out to be quite a bit more complicated than I initially expected. The first thing I did was look at the addresses the Indian-based companies were registered to, but immediately there were inconsistencies. The IP address of the scammers indicated Noida, while the business address indicated Faridabad. Noida and Faridabad are relatively close to each other and are both located in what is called the Delhi New Capital Region, but are distinctly different cities. And even if we ignore this, a quick survey of Google Street View shows that none of the buildings in Suryanagar are any taller than two or three stories high. This is in Star- Fuck. I mean, $3 there, you're, you're fucking living like a king, bro contrast to the scammer's office, which appears to be reasonably elevated based on a window that is occasionally made visible. This was pretty much a dead end, so I decided to take a look at their computers, but this- So they have a balcony with grass on it? This didn't prove very helpful either. None of the files on any of the PCs had any mention of what building they might be in, and even worse, none of the computers had wireless cards. Normally, getting the location would be as simple as getting the names and signal strengths of the surrounding Wi-Fi networks and using public databases to triangulate their position. But because there was no Wi-Fi capability, this was rendered impossible. And at this point- They have no Wi-Fi in this place? 
I was completely out of ideas and frankly ready to give up, when by complete accident I got exactly what I needed. In addition to the inside cameras, the office also had an outside view of the hallway leading up to the door of their room. And it was when I was looking through old recordings of this camera angle that I stumbled across this footage of a cleaner opening the door to an adjacent office. Now, I had never seen this door open, and though it appeared that there was something written on it, the camera was too sharply angled to provide anything intelligible of value. However, once the door was opened, it provided me with this still frame of inverted text. By flipping this image horizontally, it shows us the name and logo of a business. Story Design. This is a fully legitimate product design agency, and because they only operate in the Indian daytime, likely had no idea they were next to an office full of scammers. But it was the address of this business that I really cared about, and this address pointed me to a shared office space called the KLJ Noida One. This is a set of three buildings, Tower A, B, and C, and it would be in- Do you know how many scams are probably operating out of these three buildings? Oh my God, dude, so many. In Tower C that the address would indicate the scammers would be situated. But I wanted to confirm this, and it again would be the outside window that would help me to do so. In front of the window was a tall building, and to the right of it, a much shorter and smaller one. We can see this exact same structure to the right, or in the case of the scammer's orientation, the front of Tower C, as indicated by satellite imagery. So we know exactly what building the scammers are in, but what about their room? Story Design's address also had the room number, 921, meaning that through an educated guess, the scammers would either be in room 920 or 922. But I wouldn't even have to guess, because the owners of the KLJ Noida 1 very kindly provided floor plans on their website. And with this floor plan, it became very obvious that the scammers were in room 922. As clearly shown on the floor plan, Story Design was in room 921. At the Bro, imagine just sleuth. He probably worked on this for months, dude. Right. I can I can only imagine unless he's just a beast and he did this in a week or some shit. But yeah, you're working on this for a while and you just get a break. You get a break on it. Oh, end of this corridor while the scammers were relative to the camera on the left hand side in room 922. And if all this evidence still wasn't enough, a friend of mine, Neep Scambates, was actually in India at around the same time as my investigation. And he very bravely went to their physical location and took this first person video. It's the entrance of the tower. So the call center is over there. And then to the left, basically in this room, then there's like one more room. Then we have like elevators which are going to different floors. And this is 922. Like one left on the stair. Yeah, he literally walked in and fucking, that's crazy. Oh, nice. It's quite empty. So, hello. So it's, I guess it's this one, I guess, because like nobody's there. Like, then. Yeah, probably it's this one. So here's like more, but like this is not the one, I guess. Like proper offices. Like I send my friend if it's the right location, you know. I just tell him, you know, this looks like the one. Maybe it's the one. But can you, can I, like I'll click a picture of that uh, so that he knows like... I think they work in night. Yeah, uh, probably, night. yeah. Yeah, they are not available right now. Yeah. So, so you can do one thing. You can contact someone. Do you uh, have any contact number? Contact details? Mm, from them, not, no. No? No, no contact no. number. They work in dark mode, no? Uh -huh. Like, they will not give any contact number. <laughs> Again, huge shout out to my friend Neep for physically going to their building and my friend Nanobader for helping out with the investigation. And at this point, I had gathered pretty much all the evidence I needed. I had their exact location, the names of the bosses and the employees, the money mules they would use to launder money, and their companies that were based in India. Instead of idly observing them, it was now time to engage in sabotage. The first thing I did was send a lengthy email to past victims letting them know that they had been scammed and what steps they needed to take to get their money back. And although I didn't get many responses because most people simply don't check their email, there was one response in particular that definitely stood out to me. The reply was from a lady in her 70s who explained that she was going through a difficult time due to her husband passing away which made it easier for the scammers to take advantage of her <sighs> it's so hard listening to this stuff 
Thankfully, because of my email, she was able to contact her bank, make a dispute, and get her money back. And although there was ultimately a happy ending, it still angered me to hear that they were taking advantage of somebody in such a vulnerable position. But it also made me realize that it wasn't enough to try to save people from scams that had already happened. I needed a way to effectively stop them from occurring in the first place. And in this case, I decided that the most effective thing to do was Shut a call up. flooding attack. This involved sending dozens of automated phone calls every single second directly to the scammer's phone system, which will overload all their available phone lines and make it impossible for anyone else to reach them. As long as I'm flooding them, every time the scammers pick up the phone, instead of being greeted with a real person, they'll instead have their ears blasted with an extremely loud screaming noise that will not only annoy them, but hopefully make them reconsider their life choices. One, two, three, it started. I would continue to flood them for quite a while, but at some point the scammers realized that trying to fight the flooding was completely useless, so they just turned off their phone number and instead focused on people who they were already in a call with. But I wasn't going to let the scammers get off that easily, so I started to boot offline their internet connection, which not only disconnected their phone calls, but also the remote sessions they had established with their victims. Okay, it does disconnect you to the PCs, but if you start up that internet connection within X amount of time and the, the, the victim or whoever on the other end still has log me in up, you can reconnect to those PCs. It doesn't, it, you know what I mean? It doesn't just like, it, it definitely stops their current connection. It doesn't mean they aren't still connected if they get their internet back though. <laughs> But after the continuous call flooding and booting of their internet, I think the scammers finally realized that something wasn't right because they started pointing at the CCTV with the realization that they were probably hacked. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, unsurprisingly, they disconnected all of their cameras and never reconnected them. But the scammers forgot about one critical thing, their computers. And since I had pretty much done everything I could do, I decided it was finally time to confront these scammers by telling them their real names and all their information. Calling the boat, how may I help you? Yeah, who am I talking to? Is this David from Geek? It's David. Are you sure your name's David? Yeah. Your name is David. Because I'm 90% yes. sure that your name is not David. In fact, I know it's not David. May I know what is your concern, sir? Yeah, your name's Sindhu, and I know everything that you've been up to. May I know what is your concern? Yeah, my concern is that you're in a scam call center, Sindhu. So let me ask you a few questions, firstly. How did you join the scam call center? And how much do you get paid? Thanks for holding the line. <laughs> yeah, who am I speaking to? Who's this? This is Edward. Yeah, Edward? I'd like to speak to Praful, please. I believe I was just speaking to Sindhu. Who are you? Who am I? I'm somebody who's been investigating your scam call center, and I want to ask some questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you, okay? I know everybody in your office. I know Shashi, Sindhu, Sparsh, Devesh, mm -hmm. everybody in your office, okay? I know Praful, okay. Sarika. I know you're in the Noida One building. I know the room that you're in. So just give, me, give it to Praful. Because you're not going to be able to answer any of the questions I'm going to ask. No, you are not calling at the right place. I'm not? <laughs> I'm not calling at the right place? Yeah. So do you know what the KLJ Noida 1 building is? Do you know Unit 922? You ever heard of that? No. You've never heard of Unit 922 before? No, sir. Really? Right now you are connected with the call. Yeah. So you've never heard of, of Unit 922 and you've never heard of story design? You know, we sent somebody up to your building. You know that, right? Somebody took photos of your office. I think you know what Unit 922 is. And after this, they hung up the phone, but I was still able to capture this audio of their reactions to finding out that they've been hacked. Okay, can I speak to Okay. 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 Well, I don't know who you are. I don't know whom you are talking about. But if you need to talk to us, you can come and meet us right here. Huh. 
लास्ट टाइम मैं ये बताने वाला था कि बाहर से किसी से मेरे को पता लगा था कि कोई मैं यहाँ पे आके फोटो खींचे गया था It seems like this group of scammers were pretty shaken by what I said. If you enjoy the investigations, consider liking and subscribing and watching another video where I destroy more scammers. Ah, uh, this guy is a fucking savage, bro. Well, I mean, who knows how that pans out? Like, they're probably still scamming people right now, you know? Uh, but... Yeah, that's fucking... That's wild, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, it's in it's in the Reactville section of Discord too. Man. That's great. I was scammed for over $7,000. Holy shit. It's cool that people are giving him money for this. That was a good video. That was really good. I'm really happy I watched that. 